Welcome to iLecture Online. Here's our next example of how to take a test, and this comes from the JE Advanced Test. And it's a kind of an interesting problem. So let's read it together and see what we need to do. It says here that an object is fired upward with a velocity v sub naught from the surface of a spherical planet. It doesn't have to be Earth, it's some, some planet. When it reaches the maximum height, the acceleration due to gravity at that height is one quarter the acceleration at the surface. So I have a little sketch here. So it's g sub naught at the surface and it's one quarter that when it reaches maximum height. If the escape velocity of the planet equals v sub e, that's the escape velocity, is equal to the initial velocity of the object times the square root of n, what is the value of n? And we have to ignore any laws due to the atmosphere, and n is an integer between 1 and 9. So again, we need a strategy, and we need some equations. So first of all, we need to have a relationship between what that maximum height can be and these numbers right here. And remember, with the universal equation of gravity, that the force of gravity, and therefore also the acceleration due to gravity, is equal to 1 over the distance squared. I shouldn't say equal, I should say proportional. So this is proportional to 1 over r squared. Now, on the surface of the Earth, the distance from the center of the Earth is the center. That distance, of course, well, I keep saying the Earth because I'm thinking about the Earth, but it could be any planet. This would be the radius of the planet. And so if we then go twice the distance, we take 1 over r squared, that would be 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. In other words, the force of gravity up here, if we go twice the distance, so we have the distance from the center of the Earth to the surface, and then we do this again, if this is equal to the radius of the planet, then the acceleration to gravity would be 1 quarter what it is on the surface. So that is established. So this is equal to 1 over 2 squared, which is equal to 1 over 4. And then you can see that, yes, the height that it reaches is equal to the radius of the planet. Now, we also need some equations. We need to know that the potential energy at that location, at any location, would be equal to minus gm big M over r to the first power. Now, notice that's the mass of the object. This is the mass of the planet, the universal constant of gravity, and the distance away from the center of the object, or the planet, I should say. And then finally, we could say that the kinetic energy is always going to be equal to 1 half mv squared. And then we also should know that the orbital velocity, v sub o, is equal to the square root of gm over r. So all those things may play a role in solving this problem. So we have all the equations we need. We right away were able to figure out how high it went. And now we need the strategy. What I'm going to do here is calculate the amount of potential energy gained, which would equal the, the uh, kinetic energy loss. So what we can say is that the potential energy gained is equal to the kinetic energy lost. And of course, since the velocity at this height is equal to zero, it will lose all of its kinetic energy. From that, we should be able to get the velocity initial from that, we should be able to compare that to the orbital velocity, and from that, we should be able to compare that to the escape velocity, because we know that the escape velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times the orbital velocity. So we need that equation as well. So we have everything we need, and we have the strategy. Potential energy gained from going from here to here is equal to kinetic energy lost. From that, we get the uh, orbital velocity. Uh, no, from that we get the initial velocity, from that we get to the orbital velocity, and from that we get to the escape velocity. So that's kind of the way we want to approach this thing. So, potential energy at the surface. So potential energy at the surface is equal to minus g m big M over the radius of the planet. Now, the potential energy at the maximum height max h is equal to minus g m big M over 2 times the radius of the planet. So the difference between those two would be the potential energy gained. So potential energy gained, potential energy gain is equal to the potential energy at the max height minus the potential energy 
at the surface. So this is equal to potentially at the maximum height, that would be right here, so minus g m big M over two times the radius of the planet, minus minus g m big M over the radius of the planet, like this. And now in order to be able to uh, subtract those, I need to multiply this times 2 and this times 2 because I want a common denominator. Now this is positive. I have two of these minus one of those. So this is equal to positive g m big M over 2 times the radius of the planet. So that's the potential energy gained. Like that. Okay, now we said that that must equal the kinetic energy lost. So therefore, kinetic energy, which is equal to one-half mv initial squared, because that's the total amount of kinetic energy it had at the surface, it's going to lose all of that to get to the maximum height, and that must therefore equal gm big M over two times the radius of the planet. Now, let's see what we can simplify. They're both divided by two, so that cancels. They both have a little m in it, that cancels. So notice, I can now solve for v initial, which is what I wanted to do. So I come up here. So I have v initial squared is equal to gm over the radius of the planet. That means that v initial is equal to the square root of gm over the radius of the planet. Now, what did we say? That the orbital velocity is equal to this. That means that the initial velocity is equal to the orbital velocity. And now we have to have a relationship between... You have the initial velocity of the signal. Oh, yeah, that's, this is going to get very confusing. There we go. The initial velocity is equal to the orbital velocity. And then when we make this relationship right here, we know that the escape velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times the orbital velocity, but since the orbital velocity equals the initial velocity, the escape velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times the initial velocity. And then we look at the equation that we had right here. We see then that the square root of 2 is equal to the square root of n. So then we could say that the square root of 2 equals the square root of n, so n is equal to 2. And that is the correct answer for this particular problem. So again, it all comes down to coming up with a strategy, understanding that the potential energy gained equals the kinetic energy lost, understanding all the equations associated with orbital velocities, potential energy, kinetic energy, the orbital velocity, and the escape velocity in terms of the orbital velocity, and then realizing that if we get to a point where the acceleration to gravity is a quarter of what it was on the surface, realizing that the force of gravity or the acceleration of gravity is proportional one over the distance squared, if we're done twice as far away, we only have one quarter the acceleration due to gravity, and that will enable us to solve this problem relatively quickly, and that is how it's done. Relatively quickly? <laughs> it's an interesting problem. Yes. I figured the answer it probably was not one, four, or three, or, not, or nine, because then you wouldn't bother with the square root of n. Ah, yes. The, you would expect n to be a relatively small number, and my initial thought also was that I knew the relationship between the orbital velocity and the escape velocity was square root of two. So, if you want to throw a Hail Mary, <laughs> you may just think, maybe, that velocity initial is the same as the orbital velocity, and therefore the square root of 2. Of course, it's a leap of faith, and if you're off by 1, you don't get any points. So it's... If you're running out of time. If you're running out of time, and you want to do a quick guess, you say, you know, if you know this, there may be a high probability that that is the same equation right there, and therefore just call it the square root of 2. It's not a bad guess. Well, I said, I figured the answer was one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that's right. It cannot be 1. That's right. 1 is definitely not possible because if it is 1, then the initial velocity would equal the escape velocity and there would not be a maximum height. You would just keep going. So there's, yeah, definitely 1 is out. <laughs> but it ends up 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <laughs> I think it was before or 9. 
sign because if, if, it was, if it was a perfect square root, they wouldn't bother with a square root sign. Ah, I know it's a leap that's, of faith. That's, a, that's another leap of faith, yeah. But it's not as big as yours. <laughs> <laughs> I figure if they put a square root in there, it's kind of a, a giveaway. Yeah, that it's two or three. Would, yeah, definitely I was thinking two or three would yeah. probably somewhere in the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. It's a good problem. Definitely is.